Hello and welcome to Anatomy with Dr. P. In today's lesson, we're going to look at the different types of epithelium. Remember, epithelium is one of our four basic body tissues, and it's responsible for covering surfaces and lining body cavities. The first type of epithelium we'll be looking at is simple squamous epithelium. Simple means that the epithelium is composed of one layer of cells, and squamous means that the cells are flat. The Latin word squama means scale-like. To see simple squamous epithelium, we're looking at a lung slide. So here on the slide on our screen, we can see lung tissue. When we look at this organ, we notice all of these little white spaces. These are air pockets inside of the lung called alveoli. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna zoom in on an alveolus over on this part of our slide. So let's get it lined up and zoom in. As we zoom in, what we can see is that this individual air pocket is lined by a single layer of flat cells, which is why we call this a simple squamous epithelium. Now, this simple squamous epithelium allows the alveolus to do rapid gas exchange with the blood vessels surrounding it. So anywhere we need to move materials very quickly, so either inside of the lungs or between a blood vessel and a tissue, we find simple squamous epithelium. The next type of epithelium we'll be looking at is simple cuboidal epithelium. Simple means we have one layer of cells and cuboidal means cube-shaped. Anytime you see that OID ending in anatomy, it means shaped like. The slide we're currently looking at comes from a kidney. Let's zoom in so we can get a better view at the tubules of the kidney. So we're gonna zoom in on this part of the slide here. Now, as we zoom in, we can start to see all of these little circular structures. And as we get closer and closer and closer and it resolves, we can see that the epithelium that lines these tubules is very short and square-like. So that is where we get cuboidal. And we only have one layer of cells. Hence the term simple cuboidal epithelium. Now to help identify individual cells, it really helps to look for the darkly stained nucleus because there's only going to be one nucleus per cell. So you can see each of these kind of little square shaped cells here that are lining. Now simple cuboidal epithelium is really good at absorption and secretion. So here, as fluid flows through this tubule, we're either able to pull things out of it or add things to it. Let's move on to take a look at simple columnar epithelium. As we've mentioned previously, simple tells us that the epithelium is formed by a single layer of cells. The term columnar means that the cells will be tall and rectangular in shape. The slide we see on the screen comes from the ilium, the last region of the small intestine. Let's zoom in so we can get a better look at the cells that line this organ. So we're just gonna zoom in here. And as we zoom in, we can see here is our simple columnar epithelium. We can see that the cells are tall and rectangular in shape. And if we look at the darkly staining nuclei, we can see that they form this nice single row. So we have one layer of epithelium on this side and another layer of epithelium on this side. Now, these cells are very tall, so they form a nice barrier that helps prevent any pathogens, things like bacteria, from moving into the body, but they also provide a lot of surface area for things like absorption and secretion. 
Now, as we look at this slide, you may notice these kind of white balloon-like cells showing up. These are called goblet cells, and their job is to produce mucus. Our last type of simple epithelium is called pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Pseudo means false, stratified means layers. So this type of epithelium is falsely layered. It looks like it has multiple layers of cells, but in actuality, it's just a single layer. Columnar tells us that the cells are tall and rectangular. When we look at the slide on the screen, we can see two separate organs. The organ on the top of the screen is the trachea. This is the airway that travels towards the lungs. Below the trachea, we have the esophagus. The esophagus is an organ that heads to the stomach. So this is transporting foods and liquids. This is transporting air. In order to see pseudostratified columnar epithelium, we're going to focus on the trachea portion of the slide. So let's zoom in and see if we can't find a nice example of pseudostratified columnar epithelium. So as we zoom in here, what we see is a layer of tall cells. Notice the cells here. And notice how it looks like there's multiple layers of cells. In actuality, this is a single layer of cells that's attached right here along the basement membrane. Now, why does this look layered? Well, imagine taking a group photo. Imagine having the shorter individuals up front and taller individuals in back. It may look like the taller individuals are standing on top of the shorter ones, even though everybody's feet is still on the ground. Same idea is true here. Some of the cells are shorter, other cells are taller, and as a result, we get this stacked-like appearance. You'll also notice along the surface of the cell, all of these little hairs, these are called cilia. They help to move mucus. Now, the nice thing about pseudostratified columnar epithelium is that it's only found in the respiratory tract. So you only have to worry about this somewhat hard to identify epithelium when you're looking at the trachea or the bronchi in the lungs.